Microsoft Tasks. There are a lot of different ways to do tasks in the Microsoft ecosystem. So in this video, we're gonna have a look at all of those options, the evolution of them, how they link together or not, and what's the best thing that you should use right now in 2024. But of all my clients, all my prospects, one of the main thing that slips through the gaps of Microsoft ecosystem is people wanting to do tasks or project management. And here's what's available in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So let's start with the OG of tasks in Microsoft Outlook. So let's not forget Outlook. So when Outlook came out, it's got email, calendar, and tasks. Now tasks was not amazing in the original Outlook. It's just a list of stuff. You can have different sub lists. You can have completion. It did have quite a lot of functionality. You can have completion. You could assign it to other people even before anything else was out. And that still persists depending on which version of Outlook you're using. So if I come into my new Outlook on the Mac, it does have email, calendar, contacts. But if I go to go to my tasks, all it's got is a link, a web link that jumps me out into Microsoft to do. Now, why bother looking at tasks when you can use to do? So what's Microsoft to do then? So Microsoft acquired Wonderlist, a mobile app that had tasks in it. They then rebranded it as Microsoft to do. And in doing so, they used like the back end is Outlook tasks. So if you do a task in to do, it actually creates a task in Outlook tasks and vice versa. So you can make an Outlook task into a to-do, just it just automatically syncs. And if you wanna know more about Outlook and to-do syncing, then check out this video here, where we go through it in a bit more detail. So there's really no reason to use Outlook tasks anymore because Microsoft have moved all the functionality, I say all the functionality, it's a cut down version if, you, if you're a heavy user of Outlook tasks and you move to Microsoft to-do, there's gonna be stuff that you can't do in to-do but it does look nicer. It's a lot fresher, cleaner look, and uh, probably fits most people better. But Microsoft has not really integrated that back into their products yet. Like we can see, there's, yeah, I can't get to do from Outlook. I've got to jump out into the web browser. If though I came into Outlook on the web, which I think is now Microsoft's leading development of Outlook, and then did this little sidebar here, that pops open to do in alongside my email inbox and I can drag emails and create a task in there. So in the web, if I click the to do button, it jumps me out into to do, but at least keeps the things I was doing in Outlook side by side. So I can still see my calendar, I can still get back to my email and it's a bit more integrated. Hopefully that is coming to every version of desktop Outlook. There's Outlook and to do and tasks sort of sync. And then there's OneNote, which is where you take notes. And in OneNote, you can add in like texts, drawings, and then highlight your text to something. So you can have like little checklists, which don't go anywhere in the rest of the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Or you can have, again, depending on the version of Outlook, you've got Outlook Tasks, I think it's called. And Outlook Tasks does what you it says on the tin, it's going to create a task that appears in OneNote, but also syncs with Outlook tasks. But if you do like a to-do list, that doesn't go and sync anywhere, but you used to be able to do an Outlook task. And if you want to know more about that and see how it was originally, click watch this video next, but looks like you can't do that anymore. But you used to be able to do an Outlook task, which would sync into tasks and therefore would sync into to-do. So you could get stuff from OneNote into to do which i'm not sure whether you can do or not now because microsoft keep updating OneNote and those different versions of it but it looks like that's going and it has they haven't replaced it with a to do app in OneNote. those are all i would say like personal tasks options for doing your personal tasks i think keeping notes and to do's and email all together is something that is really useful and would be good if Microsoft integrated those better, but we are where we are. They're all sort of personal tasks. So what about Teams? So when Teams came out, Microsoft also released 
pretty similar around the same similar sort of similar time planner which is group tasks so to do outlook tasks all private by default unless you choose to share it planner actually lives in a microsoft 365 group so it lives in a team because when you set a team up it sets up a microsoft 365 group yeah. if you want to know more about what gets set up when you set a team up watch this video next when you set a planner up it has to live in a group and therefore is shared with every member of the group. If you want to know how to create a planner for personal use, which no one else sees, then watch this video next. Planner's good for group tasks. And then in Teams, they had an app that was called Tasks by Planner and To Do. So that was if you make a task in Planner and assign it to somebody, it appears in to do as an assigned task. So you can see all of your tasks from wherever they live in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Then means you can't ever miss a, miss a task as long as you put it in planner or to do because if someone's assigned you a group task, it comes into your to do. It also comes into your tasks by planner and to do because that's showing you both. And so you can see any planner in the whole organization that you're a member of, all the tasks assigned to you sort of feedback through. So you can see everything that you need to do, which is great functionality. The task by planner in to do is going to be renamed just to planner as part of Microsoft's announcement of the new planner, which is bringing together to do and planner and Microsoft projects on the web, which I'll we'll talk about in a sec. All of this stuff we've talked about so far is, is included in your Microsoft 365 license project and Viva goals, which we'll talk about in a sec, are uh, add-ons to your license, which we're going to cover them separately. So task by planner to do is just going to be called planner and then planner is going to include personal plans, which this video, which I mentioned before, is sort of a workaround until that's out. And so whether you view your to-do in Task by Planner to-do, or whether you view it in a separate to-do app, it's still the same sort of functionality. It's just pulling out stuff from to-do or pulling out stuff from planner. So these are personal ones until you choose to share it. And these are group ones that anybody in the group could see. If you don't watch any of the rest of the video, that's what I'd recommend using. Just put your tasks in Planner or put them in To Do. And if you use OneNote, there might be a little workaround that's coming in the future, which we'll come on to in a minute. So if you're interested in that, then stick around until the end. So why listen to me? I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime. We help organizations work more efficiently, happening to use the Microsoft 365 ecosystem to do that because that's what they're already paying for. Put these videos out on YouTube for free so that you can upskill yourself in the Microsoft ecosystem. But then the next problem you're gonna have is doing the change management to get your whole organization to work in a more modern way. You'll probably find that probably 10% of the organization will even be slightly bothered about working in a better way using more of the Microsoft apps. And if you need help unlocking that other 90%, then consider booking a free call using the link in the description below We'll see if we can help. But let's continue into the rest of the Microsoft ecosystem. So then there is Microsoft Lists, which was called SharePoint Lists, and then Microsoft sort of rebranded it as Microsoft Lists. You can have a personal list, or you can live it in SharePoint so that they're group. So you can make a list in a team, because when you set a team, it sets up a SharePoint site. So you can have a group list in a team, or you can have a personal list, which just lives in your OneDrive. So only you can see it until you choose to share it. So when they revitalize lists, I guess people thought that you could then use it as a to-do list, which you would be forgiven for thinking so. But if you make a list, then it's out of the box, not very useful unless you just want to make a list. So if you want to assign some tasks to somebody, list isn't a task manager. So if you assign a list item to somebody, that will not appear in to-do or planner. It doesn't appear anywhere. They might get an email notification, but then there's no follow up. If you use Planner, if you assign a task to somebody with a due date, they get chased up periodically. So this, this is the task is due this week, it's due in three days, it's due today, you haven't done it, it's a day old, it's three days old, it's five days old, you, you know, you get chased up. So there's benefit of putting group tasks into Planner, there's benefit of putting tasks into To Do because you, you can put due dates and you know it flags them back up to you as you're using To Do. This does not do that out of the box. You can create something a bit more bespoke. If you don't like to do and you don't like planner and it, you need it to do something bespoke, then list is good for that because you can make it within reason, look and feel how you want it to work. 
but I would say some basics aren't included. Like there's no follow up and there's no recurring tasks or anything like that. So I've got some videos on this that solve both of those issues, which are not difficult to, to sort out with Power Automate. But if you're interested in making lists work a bit more like a task manager and make lists a bit more useful, then check out this video next. So lists sort of stand alone and doesn't go anywhere else in the Microsoft ecosystem. So it's getting more confusing now. Along with OneNote, which is like a digital equivalent of a notebook, Microsoft made Loop, which is on its surface, borrowing concepts from Notion, but then also has its own concept of like Loop components, which can live in any other Microsoft app and all stay in sync wherever they're accessed and edited from. So Loop functionality massively overlaps with OneNote and Microsoft have not really released anything about well, why you should use OneNote and when you should use Loop. If you want to use a stylus and handwriting, then you have to use OneNote because Loop doesn't do that. If you just want your text, then Loop can actually function a bit like, you can think of it like taking notes that any, anybody could edit in real time. And it sort of overlaps with SharePoint pages as well, because there might be some stuff that you people use Notion to publish internal documents, and you might want to do that in Loop. So if we talk about tasks in Loop, when that first came out, you could add this tasks sort of component into a Loop page or well, the components came up first you could add tasks into a loop component and that would actually sync back into planner which if you assigned it to somebody would sync back into to do so you can get a task all the way back from planner into someone's to do if you assigned it to them or if you assign it to yourself then obviously it comes into your own to do but then microsoft made it so you can copy an entire planner board into loop and make that a component so then you can then show your what going all over the place here look the, the, the lines going all over the place you can then put a planner board again there's no like you can't just there's no ui to add planner in you've got to go and copy the url from a planner board and stick it in loop and if you want to know more about loop then watch this video next you put a planner board into loop component which makes it a component and then you can have a planner board that then shows up in any, any other app because but the plan is that they show up everywhere so i think you can have a loop component in teams chat is coming to teams channels if it's not out already then it can appear in outlook so you can put a loop component into an outlook email now all of those may or may not be very useful depending on your outlook in life but it is sort of integrated and then sort of not i think putting a planner board into OneNote might be out at the time of recording i'm not sure and putting a loop component into OneNote might be out at the time of recording but i'm not sure so you need to check check it as you're watching this video because the way Microsoft rolls out their updates, it goes to different people at different times. And they announce stuff way in the future and then re-announce things. So it's quite difficult to know when stuff's come out and when, when it's not. So we've got Loop that's kind of integrated, but a bit separate and kind of overlapping, which is a bit tricky. And then we've got app mentions, which I'll just talk about. So in any Office app, so Word, PowerPoint, Excel, then you can do a comment whilst you're in that app you might say, well, here's a, a cell in Outlook. So I want to give someone a task about this particular cell, or I've got this Word document that I'm working on collaboratively, and I want someone to go and look through this specific paragraph. You can make a comment, at mention them, and then that will fire them a notification, say so-and-so says, do this on this thing. Now, it would be useful if that flowed through into Planner or To Do, but that doesn't go anywhere. That just fires someone a notification, and whether they come in to do it or not is it's up to the up to them as well. But you can't assign a due date and it doesn't go into their to do. So if you do do tasks that way, then they're gonna get lost essentially. But keeping the task in the context of what the task is, rather than make a planner task that links to that Word document that says update so and so by this time, if you want to make a proper task, if you just want to do a little comment and that mention, then that's also useful, but it doesn't go anywhere. And then three more apps almost there. So we've got Viva Goals, which can integrate into Planner. So you can have a Planner board that links to Viva Goals that updates the goal depending on how far through that plan you are, which I'm not sure I want to use for anything critical because people can drag stuff around by mistake. There's no like auditing in Planner. So you can't see what someone's moved around. You can't, some, you could, someone else could complete that task for you rather than complete the subtask and just completely mess up your board. And you can't go back or see what's happened even, which I think is going to improve with the new planner that's coming out in spring 2024, but isn't out yet. And also obviously there, there is then like 
goals in Viva Goals. You could set someone a goal that's really a task. Like, you know, the goal should be a bit longer, depending on how, how well you've written your OKRs, which then are only live in Viva Goals and don't go through to anyone else. So a bit of confusion, no overlap there. Then there's obviously Microsoft Project, which most people, if you're project managers, will be used to using, which has got a million different versions. So I think there was a desktop version, there was Project Online, which was old SharePoint, and then you could sync the desktop one to be backed up online. And then there's Project on the web, which was a newer sort of cut down version that looked better, easier to use, but didn't have all the functionality of the original project. And it's that that then started to kind of overlap with Planner because you could have like Kanban boards, you could assign people tasks. And as they were developing it, actually assign, you got used to using Planner, you move up to using projects on the web and you then find out that if, well, if you assign someone a task, it doesn't actually flow through into their to-do, doesn't you know appear anywhere that you would expect it to. And so they've been making sort of developing planner and projects on the web in parallel. And then now they've made the good decision, I think, to that's what's going to link up to the new planner. So there's just going to be one thing called planner that's project on the web and planner and Microsoft to do all together. Although they also say Microsoft to do isn't going anywhere. So the ability to simplify is not, not one of Microsoft's strong points. And so that hopefully makes stuff easier that the functionality is obviously already in there. You have to pay extra for the project on the web bits, which is called planner premium. And if you want to know more about the new planner, then check out this video here. Last one, which I sort of mentioned was whiteboard, where you can have templates that look like you might want to do tasks. So whiteboards, I guess, the digital equivalent of having a whiteboard in the office. You know, project managers might run something, run a project and have stickies and move them around on the whiteboard so they can keep up to date with everything, which I think is mixed <laughs> in 2024. There's other ways to do that that would keep stuff digital and you could still do it in person. And whiteboard might be one of those, but whiteboard templates and stickies in whiteboard don't go anywhere else in the Microsoft ecosystem. So I would not use that for any tasks that you actually want to get done because it doesn't chase people up for you. It doesn't assign to them stuff they can't see in there to do. If you have stuck around this far, thank you very much for watching. But if the short version is, Basically, you want to keep stuff in the ecosystem. At the time of recording, you need to use Planner if you've got a group task and you want to assign it to somebody else or use To Do to manage your own tasks. And if you can get people using To Do, you will improve the hit rate of people doing tasks because they can see things that they put in themselves that are private to them and they can see things that have been assigned from any planner from anywhere in the, in the organization. So they've got like one list that they can sort of work through and manage their own work. And if you can get people into those two apps, that makes everything else easy or irrelevant because you want to be able to get stuff done in your organization. And that's a great way of doing it. Even though Planner's got some of the downsides, which hopefully are getting fixed by the new Planner and Planner Premium. I'm curious, let me know what you use in the comments below. What do you think of Microsoft's integration across their ecosystem? Could it be better? Do you think it's, it's good enough? Let me know in the comments below. Really interested to hear your thoughts. If this video was any value whatsoever, consider giving it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. We've got new videos coming out at least every Tuesday on Microsoft at work. And if you need more help, the easiest way to get help for yourself is to support the channel by joining it, just like all these people that have bought us a beer on buymeacoffee.com. Now we've sort of made it simpler, you can just support the channel straight from YouTube, just like our member, Chris Brain. Thank you for being our first member to join the channel. And if you want to join Chris and get some of the benefits, then click the join button just below this video. If you need more help helping your entire organization, then like I say, click the link in the description below to book a call, see if we're a good fit to work together and if we can help your organization out, be more efficient and get the most out of Microsoft 365. Thanks for watching so far. I'll see you in the next one.